Ben. Hmm? How old is Mommy turning? Uh, I don't know. Take a guess. How old do you think she is? Uh, I don't, I kind of forget. Do you think she looks like she's older than you? Yeah, she does. But that is really older than me. How old do you, th do you think she's like 20 or more? I think dad is no, mommy. 100. You think dad is 100? Yeah, and I think mommy is 1. <laughs> 1? <laughs> Who's got a big birthday coming up who you live with? Ben. That's right. It's a surprise party. No. Who else's birthday is going to be this year that's a really big birthday? Yeah, but you can you can talk. Mom's. You can say you can talk in a normal voice. Yeah. Mom's. How old is mommy gonna be? Forty. Whoa! Does she look like she's forty? No. How old does she look? Um, seventeen. I've known Lori for more than actually more than forty years, even though she's only turning forty this year. And uh, because uh, I had a very close relationship with Laurie before she was born. And she came out, actually she came out late. She liked to pretend that she was going to arrive and yet she had me going to the hospital one day and then sending me home and then going back and then sending me home. And then there I was, I just washed my hair in curlers and all of a sudden, wham, she's, she's, she's I'm ready to come out. And off we went to the hospital. I must say, I didn't look too good, but anyway, and out she popped, and she was supposed to be a boy. She was supposed to be David, named for my father. And according to my sister, we already had two girls, so it had to be a boy. Well, Auntie, you were wrong. It was another girl. And I said, oh no, another girl. But in retrospect, I'm very happy she wasn't a boy. Because she was supposed to be David, we did not have a name for a girl. So there was this assistant um, nurse, who she was in training, and she was really nice. Her name was Lori Ann, L-O-R-I, which is the proper way to spell Lori, according to us. And she was so nice that I said to, to uh, her father, I like the name Lori. So we named her Lori Beth, and I think she was named for my grandmother. Well, I was one of the first people to meet Lori because I was in the delivery room when she was born. So I think I saw her first, maybe the doctor, but I was right there along with mom. And of course we were expecting a boy, but we got a beautiful girl. And that was a very special night and she's a very special person. Of course she started crying and I'm reminded that when she got married, that we had to deal with a little bit some tears as well, uh, trying to get her down the stairs and then down the aisle. So I think she was a little bit uh, shook up that day, didn't like all of the attention, but she certainly deserved it and she was a beautiful bride. I met Lori on August 4th, 1976. Although now that I think about it, she was born very late at night, so I may not have met her until August 5th. And I fell in love with her as soon as I met her. You can see. Lori. I met Lori when she was born. I'm guessing that, um, I don't know if I went to the hospital or not, did I? Looks like I went to the hospital. <laughs> the videographer says I did. And maybe I kissed her and was really nice to her in the beginning. <laughs> I think she was born. <laughs> She was my third niece. She was a good present. The girl with the flaxen hair. Well, you are the girl with the flaxen hair. And uh, have always been so sweet, lovable, and fun. And that's the best part. You know how your sisters teased you about being blonde, but all that sweetness shows in your children as well. They're sweet to be with all of you. The four of you are just a joy. Hey, Laura, happy birthday. 
I can't believe it's been 22 years since we met on that bus heading to the Halloween party that neither of us wanted to go to. Little did I know at the time I'd be making a lifelong friend and roommate. Um, she came to the nursery when I was born. Right. How do you know that? I've seen pictures. Yeah. All right. Do you remember that day? Nope. I met Lori no. the night I was meeting my roommate uh, for my first apartment in Boston. Uh, I met him through Lori's friend Kim. So after I met um, my new roommate, uh, Kim and I went across town to a bar called McCarthy's uh, to meet up with Lori and Rachel. So Lori and Rachel were late. They wouldn't come out until after they saw their episode of Friends. Uh, but when they did show up, I can remember vividly looking at Lori as she walked in and thinking to myself, there's no way she's single, so there's no point in even trying to flirt with her or anything like that. So just relax and be myself and have a good time. So we had a great time, uh, a lot of laughs, and we ended up staying out all night. Uh, the bar was closed at 2. I think we got something. We were next door uh, for a little bit, so it was well after 2 uh, before I ended up heading back to my father's house, uh, which is about a 45-minute to an hour drive outside of Boston. So this actually ties into one of my favorite Lori memories because the next day I sent Lori an email and Rachel letting them know that I had a great time. It was great meeting them. You know, thanks for the drinks. Uh, I hope we get to hang out again soon. And uh, I think Lori responded and asked her how her weekend was and we kind of went back and forth in an email exchange. Uh, and, and in that email exchange I had told her that you know, it was rainy and cold that night, that Friday or this, that Thursday night we met. Um, and I ended up rolling my window down uh, to try to stay awake on my drive home because it was so late. Uh, but when I did that because it was rainy and cold, I ended up catching a really bad head cold and spent all weekend in bed. And I knew she was down in New York having a great time. So I said something to the effect of an email that um, um, if it wasn't for meeting her, I wouldn't have been sick and had to stay home all weekend uh, because I had to roll, drive with my window rolled down. Well, her response was to me was, it's not my fault that you had your head hanging out the window like a common dog. Don't blame it on me. So right then, uh, with that response, I knew I really liked this girl. Uh, she had a lot of personality, and uh, I really was looking forward to trying to hang out with her again. So, Hi, Lori. Happy 40th birthday. We've known each other since before we were born. Our dads were roommates, and then we were roommates in Boston, and I look back on that time with such fondness. We had such a good time. We were both single together, and we just had the best time. I met, we met Brian on the same night, and now you have this beautiful family. Lori and I have known each other for 30 years, probably more. Our parents, grandparents lived next door to each other, and we used to have Easter egg hunts together every year. How do you know mommy? She's my mom! <laughs> <laughs> How old is Auntie Lori going to be on her next birthday? 40. How did you know? Because I read a sign then it said Happy 40th Lori's birthday! Oh, that's funny. Okay, how did you meet Auntie Lori? When she came to the hospital when I was born. Oh. Hi Lori, happy birthday. Happy birthday. We are representing the Alsop and Belcher family, wishing you a happy 40th. Um, we met Lori, if you remember, um, in the dance studio for our daughter's dance classes. And I'll never forget uh, talking to you that first day. Um, we met you and I met you and I knew immediately that we were gonna be friends. So, so much so that I ran home and called Sarah to tell her that we made a new friend even though Sarah she wasn't was there. Home. We had just moved into her house because we moved in when she was five weeks old and her father and I were looking for carpeting for the dining room and my eyes were closed because he wanted me to feel something in the carpet and I thought he had her and anyway to make a long story short we dropped Lori so maybe that's why she is the way she is but it turned out okay I guess. When I was a baby. Yeah. Did you come out her belly, head, mouth, or her one for private? I think her brain. Lori is very family oriented and she um, 
she makes sure she makes time for not just her own Shabbat family, but everybody. And she makes my kids feel very special, and she makes me feel very loved and special too. She has blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has blonde hair and blue eyes? Me. Yeah. My best for compassion. Um, well, she's always willing to help. After she graduated from college, uh, her plans to go to Boston and live there fell through, so she stayed home. But I had a lot of photos, and she took all my photos that I had, and, and she put them in, in albums up until she got to 95. And when she got to 95, she said, it's all Jill, it's all basketball and, and, and soccer. You can do that one. And you know what? I haven't put one picture away since then. She, she, she hugs me and kisses me. What is your favorite, your favorite food that she makes? Um, cheese. You know she doesn't make cheese, right? <laughs> <laughs> see her? She's just a really neat person. Stubborn. When she was going into ninth grade, she said, I am not going to take the school bus. And I had said, well, how are you going to get to school? I don't know, but I am not going to take the school bus. Robin was already in college. I think Jill had a car, and I think she took her sometimes. I know Mrs. Farrelly took her, but there were some mornings when Mrs. Farrelly, you know, Mrs. Farrelly had to be there on time and Lori slept late. So instead of letting her figure out how she was going to get to school, she, by that time she probably already missed the school bus, I took her to school. She never stepped foot on the school bus to high school, that little stinker. So what do I love most about Lori? Uh, I think the easy answer would be to say what a wonderful mother she is. I mean, that goes without saying. Uh, what a great support system she's been to me all the years that we've known each other because of all the di different crazy things I want to do, like go back to school at BC to finish up my degree. Um, and from there, we decide to sell our condo and buy a, you know, buy a house and then we end, up, end up driving back and forth for hours for work. So we've been so supportive of everything. Uh, as soon as we get the house, I decide I want to try my hand at grad school. Um, and then I get kind of burnt out from that and decide that, no, I don't want to do anymore. I want to be a firefighter. She's, no matter what these crazy ideas I come up with, she's always been so supportive. Um, and I mean, all that goes without saying. But what I really love most about her, and again, it ties back into uh, when I first met her, is her uh, just a fun-loving big heart that she has her witty personality uh, she's always quick with a with a comeback there's a lot of times that i'll be texting with my friends and she'll see that you know we're you know giving each other a hard time back and forth and she'll come up with like the perfect comeback it's it's that spark and fire in her personality is one of the first things that drew me to her and it still does today and i, I love that so much about her she is just a genuine person um does not judge we both came from different backgrounds, different family lives, and she, it didn't matter to her. And she just loved me and accepted me for who I was. What do I love best about you? That you're yourself. And that's the important thing. There's so many so things to love about Lori. One thing I would say is I'm a little envious of the fact that she has wavy hair and she blows it out and it never gets frizzy and it never gets curly and all messed up. So uh, I love that about her for her because I know how much time and effort she puts into her hair. One of the things I love most about you, Laura, is your loyalty and protectiveness towards people but also towards things, whether it be pumpkin squares, shamrock shakes, or the state of Connecticut. Back in college, I remember thinking it was so hysterical how you would get defensive if anybody said anything negative about the state of Connecticut. As funny as that was, I mean, it really does speak to who you are as a friend. You're loyal and you always have my back. I know I can count on you for anything. She lives with us and she takes care of us very well. Mm hmm What do you love most about Mommy? Um, she snuggles with me when I want to, her too. Hi, Lori. It's the Lee Feinbergs. Very, very happy 40th birthday. It's a nice round number, 40. 
and divide that by 220 is how long I've known you. That's a long time now, 20 years. These guys weren't here when we first met each other, but she was. Uh, a lot of long, beautiful history together. And that's part of what I love about you, Lori, is making memories and great friendships for, for many, many years together, laughing out loud, old memories and making new memories together. Lori, there's countless things I love about you. I love how you lift me off the ground when I'm hysterical laughing and rolling around. I love how you stand by me through thick and thin. I love you for so many reasons. Our friendship is immensely important Lori, to me. you are just one of the most special people. You make everybody around you feel really special. I know when I had my 30th birthday, and certainly when I had my 40th birthday, you made me feel so special by creating fun games and this awesome photo booth, uh, I mean, photo album, and just, you just care so much. You have such a huge heart, and you're fun to be around. You're so sweet. I mean, you've got so much patience for your family, <laughs> because I know we sometimes do things that drive you crazy, and you'll let us know. I love that about you, too, that you just don't hold back on anything. And my favorite thing about Lori is her laugh and her smile. It's very contagious, um, and her smile lights up the room. Um, happy birthday, Lori. Um, some of our favorite things about Lori are that you are just easy to talk to. Um, we can always go to you with a funny story or problem, and um, you just really love to have a good time. We, um, you know, can count on you for karaoke or a drink. And, always up um, for a good time. Yeah, you are just a really great friend, so we're really um, thankful for you. And well, Laurie is a very special person. She's just a loving person, very sensitive, very warm, very caring, takes really good care of her mom and dad and certainly Brian and the children. And I think the best thing that she's done in her life <laughs> is to add those children to our lives. Uh, they're very loving children that uh, seem to really care about their grandparents, and we certainly love having them here with us. It's a self-image in the way she projects, and she has opinions. She's not afraid to state them. She and I are very much alike in terms of we have opinions, but when I, my favorite thing about her is that she, if she doesn't agree with me, she tells me. And she can back up what she means. We have the most honest relationship, almost. Yes, I have honest relationship with my friends, but with this young lady, I'm never afraid to tell her anything. I know I'm going to get the truth. Because she knows who she is. And she's not afraid to tell me I'm wrong or I'm silly or you made that up. And I, I really appreciate that immensely with her. One of my favorite things is that she helps me fashion-wise because she, um, she helps to dress me. She looked into my closet a couple months ago and she was like appalled by the lack of organization in there. <laughs> so, but she helps, she helps me pick things out and get me dressed and make, you know, helps me to look good or look better and she buys me good clothes and she buys my kids good clothes so that's really kind of um, more surfacy but I already said a lot of really nice things so I appreciate that and she makes really good Carmelita. Lori was her is her own person but she went on a coral trip and I think she had pierced ears already but then she wanted to get another one in her ear and I told her no. And she gets home from the coral trip and guess what? She had another pierced ear. You know, she did what she wanted to do. I love her because she's one of the most honest people and this is including everyone I know. You know why I really love her? Because she has known who she is from the day she was born. And she's followed through on her goals and the ambitions and what she wanted in life, and she didn't has deviated. She just always known. She has a good old self image. She's made nice friends and retained them. And there's nothing statusy about her, and there's nothing ego. There's no. She doesn't show. She has a good healthy ego, but you never know it because she just stands by herself, and that's who she is. That's what I value in most people.
I really do. I'm very proud of her, and I feel very lucky to know her. Marie and Walter and Ben. And what about you? And your allergies? She gives me a belt and always gives me a third. <laughs> And Lori, we love you. We're wishing you happy birthday today. And we love you because you are so funny. You're very blunt, which we appreciate. Um, you're so fun to be with. You are always the first to lend a helping hand or to ask if anybody needs help. You love our children. Our children love to poop at your house. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a lot of fun morning workout memories with you and um, just a lot of fun mom Littleton memories. We've had so many wonderful memories, but some of my fond the fondest memories come from when I think about us living together as roommates or in Coles Road or in Boston and getting ready to go out at night and just cranking up the music and dancing around the apartment to Kenny Loggins or Reba McIntyre. I have so um, many fun memories of Lori. I remember when we were little, we would snuggle up in my bed together and we really bonded because she and Jill fought a ton when they were kids and I got along with both of them but I really had, um, uh, I really looked out for Lori because Jill Jill picked on her a lot. Since we didn't get along that well, when you went on your trip to Yukon to do your little college visit with mom and auntie, lo and behold, I didn't even know you were going to be there. And I was just walking around campus and I was in a different part of campus from when I, where I normally was. I did not go there. Did not go there at all. And the only time I would actually go there would be when they would do the one ton Sunday and you get like a bucket and they um, you get a scooper and then you could scoop up as much ice cream as you wanted into the into your bucket so that was fun but that's like the only reason I ever went to that part of campus so anyhow I was there don't know why and saw you guys in the line as you were walking around and doing your um, tour and since you loved me so very much you decided to leave the line and leave the tour and that <laughs> that's hilarious because I mean it's good that we have such a good relationship now but that's really funny that you did not want to be where I was and you saw me and that was it so anyway kudos to you you paved your own path. She watches everything I do. What, what do you mean? Like when, like in the pool, she watches me do front flips and hands and back bends. So she's a cheerleader for you? Mm-hmm. Do you think she's a good cheerleader? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Here's another story. When I wanted to um, leave Connecticut and change things, Ashley Payne and I were thinking about moving somewhere and I decided that maybe Boston should be an op option, and in no uncertain terms, you told me to find my own city. That was it. Find your own city. I mean, boy, you were you felt very strongly about that. <laughs> um, and I was kind of disappointed. I was kind of upset, but you were right. I did. I went and found my own city, and uh, and my city's better than yours. So, huh. <laughs> just kidding we used to make up dance routines I mean that goes for Jill Lori and me um, I remember Lori coming to visit me in San Francisco and even though we had a wonderful time uh, I ran her ragged and I didn't feed her lunch several times mostly because I wanted to just show her everything and I got so excited and then all of a sudden we'd be like it's dinner she's starving she was so patient and then she'd be like Rob seriously I need to eat something so uh, that was fun um, when she came to visit me in New York, when she was pregnant with Ben. That was another time where I was like, she's really patient with me um, because we would wait a long time to have dinner. I have a lot of memories of Lori, but one of my favorites is I picked her up one day to take our day trip. I always take, used to take a day trip with the girls by themselves. And I took her to Westport. And we're driving to Westport, and she says, oh, I'm so tired. I, I said, Dizzle, you just sit back and relax. The upshot was, she never shut her mouth. All I said the whole trip down to Westport was, mm-hmm, mm -hmm. 
She talked, 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 talked. And then we got to Westport and we bought things and we ate. And we were in a store and a, little, a young man tried to pick her up. She hid behind me and we went home. Um, two more things that I'm thinking of. One is we have had two very memorable situations at airports. And one of those was like one of the coolest things we've done where we boarded a plane, a private plane to go to the Yukon men's basketball national championship game. And we didn't even know anybody. We didn't even know anybody at all, I think, on that flight. Now we know Dave Marks, but I, it was pretty crazy um, that the two of us jumped a flight, went to the game, saw the game, hugged, said goodbye to mom and dad, hopped the flight, went back home, went to work the next day. And when people asked us where we watched the game, we both said we were there. And it was like totally crazy and who would believe us and we were exhausted because I don't think we got back until like two or three o'clock in the morning but um that was totally awesome and a great memory that we have together and you're such a beautiful person inside and out and I love that um we share some of the same mannerisms um I love that we have the same taste in clothing and I love that you love to dance as much as I do um I like that you like to let go when you're dancing, just like go crazy and have a fun time. Um, I love that you just knew who you were when you were a kid. I mean, you were always playing with fashion plates, obviously always playing with Barbies. And that is, it doesn't surprise me that you went into fashion and that you are truly like the girliest of all the Gelfenbein girls. And you totally embrace that. And you always have embraced your personality and who you are. And I love you for okay, that. So We've gone to Hawaii as a family, and then we were spending New Year's in San Francisco with Robin, and then we were flying back to Connecticut. And uh, the weather was going to be bad, and we had to fly through Detroit. So we um, probably should never have gotten on that plane, but I insisted because I'm very responsible and I had to get back to work. Um, but we flew into Detroit, and somehow we landed and that was probably really risky they probably should have gone to a totally different airport but they didn't and we ended up on the plane on the tarmac for i think about five hours and they wouldn't let us off the plane and that's all we wanted to do was get off the plane and get off the plane but little did we know that once we got off the plane we were going nowhere except the airport and um, it was that time of the month for me, as you have recently reminded me. Thank you very much. Um, and we uh, had to sleep in the airport. We were in the airport for like two days. One of dad's partners came and picked us up and brought us to like some hotel, motel kind of thing that we were lucky to get. Um, some woman from the airplane like had to go to the bathroom and we held her baby, which like you and I probably would never allow or give one of our kids to some strangers. Um, it was totally insane. We don't like Cinnabon and won't eat it ever again because that's all there, there was in Burger King. I remember falling asleep for a very short amount of time and waking up with somebody like kicking me in the head as they walked by because we were laying on the floor of the terminal. Um, so this is a memory that I would love to forget, but I'm sure you'll never let me. <laughs> and it's something that bonds us. And the only other part of that I remember was when we were on the plane, there was a guy who grabs his guitar and he was singing for the whole airplane to hear Crash Into Me by Dave Matthews. That was a crazy 
totally crazy, crazy 48 hours. And you were right, Lori. There it is. You were right. We never should have left San Francisco. Never should have. Trips that to was Hawaii. I remember this thing with a salamander that Jill managed to scoop up and get rid of. Um, but my favorite memory is actually very recently, which is when we went to the Cowboy Mouth concert and just the way Lori reacted was so genuine and so excited. And I just loved seeing like how enthusiastic she was. There are so many. I mean, I remember when uh, the night of Jill's rehearsal dinner, we all know what happened to Jill because she peed herself and she was laughing and running down the hallway and Lori and I were like running behind her just cracking up and I love those like really genuine, authentic, guttural like laughs. It was just so much fun and she's so much fun to be around. I have so many memories. I could go on and on. My favorite was when she was still in college. And I was no, I was working at Kingswood, Oxford, and I went to visit her, and she, um, we went out, and we really bonded. We we drank a lot, and we had a lot of fun. Um, we did a lot of cheers to Grandma, and and we um, we we bonded. We never really got along all that great before that, but at that time. Um, Brendan Keenan would probably remember this well, and Jackie Keenan would remember this well, and Lori knows what I'm talking about. It was fun. I think she was in maybe third or fourth grade and I saw this picture of this cute little girl in a pamphlet who had a short hair. Lori's hair was long at the time and I kept saying, Lori, your hair, this will be really cute on you. I think we should cut your hair and she did not want to cut her hair and I, she fought me but eventually I won and Mrs. Angel cut her hair and oh my god, it didn't look the same as it did on the little girl in the pamphlet and Lori could have killed me. And I think that she had her school pictures taken shortly after that. And this was not a very good memory for her or for me. I learned the most embarrassing thing that comes to mind about Lori was when she was a kid, she would sing in the shower um, a lot of different things. And one of the things she liked to sing was, If I were rich and you were poor, I wouldn't give you any fill in the blank. I'm not going to embarrass her that much, but I know she knows what I'm singing about. And if you think about it, you can probably figure out what she was singing about. So too. we were leaving grandma's. I had only had my license for a couple of weeks and we were, we were leaving. And as soon as we got into the car, she started messing with the radio and I yelled at her and told her she couldn't do that. And, uh, and then she, of course, didn't want to listen to me and then we kind of hit each other and I said don't touch the driver do you want to walk home and she said she did so I was stubborn and she was more stubborn I pulled over and she got out and it was dark out and I thought I would teach her a lesson and I drove around the block and when I came back around I couldn't find her but apparently she saw me but she was hiding because um, she was trying to teach me a lesson I went back to Grandma's house thinking that maybe she had gone there, and when I went inside and said, "Where, where is Lori?" Dad put out his big paw and told me to give him the keys. And um, needless to say, I got in a lot of trouble. Lori got into a lot of trouble. I think I have and, a um, story about her. I really don't. Okay. We've had a great relationship. Donald's. She would talk about. Um, french fries and they'd be like a little bit burnt on the end and she'd go look at that cigar doesn't that cigar look yummy that's not necessarily embarrassing it's just for some reason in my head it reminds me of the singing she went to a dance um, one time I think she might have been in high school and she came home from the dance and I very innocently asked her if she had a good time and she said don't you ever ask me if I had a good time 
don't you ever ask me again. So I said, okay, I'm so sorry I asked. I just wanted, I didn't, I wasn't prying. I just wanted to know if she had fun. She was a freshman and I think a junior had asked her to the junior prom. And we went out looking for dresses. And the first place we went, she found this really, this dress she liked, but it was a little bit risque for a, you know, a young girl, so I refused to buy it. I don't know how many stores we went to, and finally I said, Laura, you're going to find something in this store, and you're not going to go. So she did, and she always tells me that it was a curtain, that she went to the dance with a curtain on her. And I think it's still in the closet. Um, there was one time when Mom and Dad left, and we... Uh, we're babysitting Lori, and we were frustrated by the fact that it took her like nine years to learn how to ride a bike. I don't know how old she was at the time, maybe six. She's probably seven, because I was probably 12 babysitting her. And we're in the backyard. We didn't have the pool yet. Uh, and Jill and I were just frustrated. We're like, she's going to get on this bike and ride it with our training wheels right now. So we sent her off on the bike. There's a little bit of a slope, and she's riding and we're cheering her on and then all of a sudden she like face plants right into the edge of the picnic table and is bleeding out of her mouth i don't know if she cut her lip or what and oh my god i felt terribly about it um but she might have been a little bit embarrassed took her so long to learn how to ride a bike obviously we got in trouble for that so jokes i think on i us. could probably come up with a couple but i think the one that I think, to me, it's funny. I'm sure Lori won't think it's funny. Is the night she had the norovirus, and this poor girl, she she just kept running back and forth to the bathroom every couple of minutes for an hour, two hours. And she was so miserable, and I had to help her get up and put her back in bed. And then she'd be there for about two minutes, and then she had to get up and run back to the bathroom. And she was just. I just I felt bad for her, but it, you know, I'm sure the last thing she wanted was, even though we were married at the time, was for me to see her, you know, having to run back and forth to the bathroom the way, the way she was. Uh, so I think that was probably a pretty embarrassing story for her. Um, She's got a lot nicer. <laughs> I mean, when she was a kid, she wasn't nice to me, not at all. She, I thought she was pretty snobby and stuck up. That's what I thought. I don't think everybody else thought that, but she certainly acted that way to me and I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And through the years, she has, for me at least, become a whole lot nicer. Hey, and honestly, she really hasn't changed. She, she still has that, that wit about her. Um, you know, obviously, we have more responsibilities with the home and the kids. Um, but if you take her and put her in any situation, whether it was now or 15 years ago, you'd get the same reaction from her. So what I mean by that is we were in Newport over the weekend. You know, you put her in a, an environment where there's music playing, a couple of, you know, have a couple of drinks. Whether she had the drinks or not, everyone's having a great time. She's out there dancing all around in circles, singing, having a wonderful time. Uh, Jessica's wedding, same exact thing. And my father came up to me and said, how many drinks has she had? She'd had maybe one or two. It's just who she is. She's, you know, she has this just fun-loving personality about her. Again, witty, just everything about her. And that's what I love so much that she that hasn't changed from her. I know a lot of people might lose that with the responsibilities of everyday life, but she has it there, and it's there all the time. And I absolutely love that. In um, many ways, Lori hasn't changed. Um, in terms of like her thoughtfulness and sweetness and being so much fun. But there's one area of her life where she has changed dramatically. And that is when she was younger, she used to drink a ton of Coke and just chow down after school on like a bag of Doritos watching General Hospital because Lori was obsessed with Jack Wagner, loved Jack Wagner. And she would just not gain a pound. She would sit at home and eat Doritos, drink soda. Uh, she danced, she played field hockey, all that stuff, and but it wasn't really all that interested in sports. And since that time, she has gone on to run a marathon, which I was very lucky to run with her, or run with you, Lori, because that was such a special moment for me, knowing how much you hated 
exercise, not even just running, but just exercise, and what a huge accomplishment that was for you. So I'm so, so proud that you did that. And I know it was tough for you for those the last few miles, but you pulled it out, and it was really exciting to watch you cross the finish line. Um, and the other thing is that now you get up at 4.45 in the morning to work out. You don't even necessarily have to get up that early. It's very impressive. So that is one area of your life where you have done such a 180, and you never cease to amaze me. She's changed a lot since she was growing you know, from when she was a little girl, because when she was a little girl, I would say, it's nice out, and she'd say, no, it's not. <laughs> I'd say, the sun is out, and she'd say, no, it's not. It's dark, it's night. We just, you know, kind of didn't always get along, but things have changed. Your feet stink. What's something about mommy that that bothers you? That she never bothers me. Good answer. Is there anything that she does that drives you crazy? No. She cannot leave the house without making sure her, her flat iron is unplugged. And if she checks it, she double checks it, she triple checks it. When she leaves, she asks, asks again, is my flat iron unplugged? It's a flat, are you sure? Do we, do we need to go back? Let's go back and check the, the flat iron. I can make sure the flat iron's unplugged. And I can honestly say, in the 16 years that I've known her, I don't think it's ever not been unplugged. Ever. So, definitely a quirk that I don't go back to uh, that, the curling iron or flat iron incident in her room when she was a kid. But she, I think she's uh, got it down. She's, she doesn't leave it plugged in anymore. She's fussy, and she won't try new things, but... Like, she only likes to bake because it's precise, and I understand that. But I think that she's coming along as a cook, I'll tell you that much. She's cooking and trying things, and I just sent her, just sent her rather, the recipe for my um, zucchini bread, and she tried it right away, and I think she'll get into other parts of the meal, too. I think she will. I don't think she's that much afraid. But I understand the baking because it's really precise. And I love her caramel ears. Lori's biggest quirk is probably the fact that she will not pick up the phone and call really anybody who's not family. She won't call and order a pizza. She wouldn't call the MDA, uh, muscular dystrophy telephone. That was absolutely something she hated. And I thought she would grow out of it, but she never did. Hi, Lori. Happy birthday. We love you. Happy birthday, Lori. Hi. Happy birthday. I love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, Lori, number 40 is here. So I'm going to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lori. Happy birthday to you. Love you, Dad. All in capital letters. Happiest of birthdays to the best daughter-in-law ever. We love that you are always fun, a little sassy, and always kind. We are happy that Brian knew a good thing when he saw it and was smart enough to marry you. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I can't believe that we are turning 40 this year. We have had so many wonderful times together. I know we'll have so many more. Happy birthday, Laura. I love you. Well, I, well someday for her birthday, this is, this, this, I can say it because she's not here. I'm going to make her a photo album of pictures of, of all of us. That's very nice. Thank you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Auntie Lori. Happy birthday to you. I love how nice and sweet you are. And I love how funny you are. Have a great 40th birthday. birthday. We, love we love you, Auntie, Auntie Lori. Okay. Would you like to sing to her? Not, no, because I think everybody has a headache and they'll make fun of me. <laughs> but I wish her 40 more, 40 more, 140 more birthdays. Because I, I just, well, I know, I just want to be with her forever. I really do. I want to congratulate, congratulate her, and she's, she has beautiful children, and she's made a wonderful marriage with a great guy. 
and I'm proud of her. Her choices, her choices were hers because she knows who she is. Okay, signing off. I don't know. I want to keep talking about my Lori because she's just. I just think she's a very special human being, and I'm a lucky auntie to be to have her in my life. And all we do is laugh. And even if we're just disagreeing, this is the beauty about a healthy ego. We laugh. It's great. That's all I have to say. I'm through. I love you, Lori. I love you, and I want you here forever. And I miss you, and I wish we could spend more time together, but I think about you a lot. And I love you, and I love your whole family, and I hope you have a great 40th year. Um, happy, happy birthday, Lori. Happy birthday, Lori. Love you. Love you, Lori. I'm glad you're finally the big 4-0, just like happy me. Happy birthday, Auntie Lori. Happy birthday, Lori. Happy, happy birthday. The happiest 40th, and another amazing year. Happy birthday, Lori. Happy happy birthday. Happy birthday, Lori. 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 Happy than what you are. <laughs> exactly. We love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Laurie. We love you. Okay, what do we want to say? Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to Laurie. you. Happy <laughs> birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lori. Happy birthday to you. All right, what did you want to say, John? Happy birthday. We're so glad you're our neighbor. <laughs> And we love you, and so does Bogey. Woof woof. Bye. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lori. Happy birthday to you. There's a commercial for Ice Age, and in it, the creatures say, reporting for duty. And then one of them goes, duty. <laughs> so from duty, <laughs> God bless, many years, enjoy, and have a lot of fun. 40, oh, so young. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Lori, happy birthday to you. I love you, I wish you so many more, not just 40 more, but to infinity and beyond. I think you are such an awesome mom and uh, aunt and sister and daughter and wife and friend and I know that you're much more than my sister. You are my friend and one of my best friends and I love you. I wish you good health and thank you for being such an awesome person in my life. Lori, I wish Hi. you the most happy and healthy 40th birthday and many, many, many more and much enjoyment in life and just keep on doing what you're doing that makes you special so happy healthy birthday i love you i love you i love you and i'm really glad you're not a boy Lori, happy 40th birthday i can't even begin to tell you how much i love you because you have been such an enormous part of my life your entire life and i just adore everything about you i'm so happy with how your life has turned out. I'm really proud of you for just who you are and the children you're raising and just how your life has worked out. It's just, it's very exciting because I know it was really important to you when you were younger to get married and have children and you have completely flourished in that area and I wish you another very happy 40 years. I hope in 40 years we can go see Cowboy Mouth again and you can jump up and down like you did at the show. Um, but in the meantime, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Lori. Thanks for always calling me Vons. I love so many things about you, like the fact that we wear a lot of the same clothes and that you make really yummy caramelitas and like everything else that I said in this video because I don't want it to go on forever and I love you happy birthday to you thanks for always being such a huge support system for me Lori I love you so so much you're an amazing listener you're 
I'm so lucky to call you my sister and one of my very dearest friends. Happy, happy birthday. Let's do it again. I have on your Your hat. Nice. <laughs> I'll have to check it with my teeth. No. My husband and I are going to sing happy birthday to you again. Film it, film it, will film you, it, film it. Are we I'm, filming? I'm totally filming. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear la 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 Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Fred. Thank you. Right here. Fred, this is all she wanted for her birthday. I know. That's all I wanted for my birthday. It's not Works, how she's changed. Um, I think I've covered everything, but one of the things I do want to add in is how much uh, I love you. Happy 40th birthday. And I just I can't imagine a life without you. Um, you've given me two of the best things in this world, Morgan and Ben. Uh, you've given me a third thing in this world, and that's uh, one of the best in law family that you could ever have for. Um, and I, I just I can't thank you enough for always being there for me. I love you so much. And I'm also going to add in one more thing. Every time I'm in the office and I'm trying to do some work and, and I decide I need a break, I always end up flipping through our flow albums, and I always go right to this picture. This is one of my favorite pictures of you. You so look so happy, such a huge smile on your face, and I, I just hope that I'm able to keep bringing that smile to you every day. Because uh, I know you you make me smile that big every day. Um, I love you so much, and uh, I hope you had a wonderful birthday, and I can't wait to spend 40 more years with you. I love you so much. Happy birthday, Mommy. I know you're inside the phone. What do you mean she's inside the phone? That means she's at the dentist. Yeah. So do you think I'm doing <laughs> FaceTime? Yeah. No, we're not doing FaceTime at all. Happy birthday to Mommy. Happy birthday, dear mommy. Happy birthday to worry. Happy birthday to mommy. Happy birthday, dear mommy. Happy birthday to mommy. I love you, mommy. You're best mom in the whole wide world. I love you in the whole wide world. <laughs> you gonna give her a Bad. kiss? How much do you love her? Whoa. Come on back. Does mommy